So next we have Dr. Kamal Kapoor, and he has a huge, I mean, uh, I, I think he's the largest uh, IPCL user in India, design and experience. Probably so in the quick, world. quick six minute talk, your time is cut, Kamal. Okay, uh, I think I'll, I'll go fast. It's a very interesting presentation. I wish I could show you some very, very unique situations where you can't even imagine a fake lens can be implanted. I've got them customized, made for myself, and done them. Okay, so there are no financial disclosures. I have no financial relationship with any of the products I'll be talking about. I've used all of these fake lenses, uh, but my major experience is probably with the, I, I think it's not, uh, Agya, got it. Okay, so we start again. Uh, so I'll be talking about the design and the experience with this particular uh, brand of uh, fake lens. Mm. No financial uh, disclosure here. I've used all of these lenses and a reasonable sizable number, but I think my maximum experience is goes in thousands is uh, with the IPCL. There are various options available. Now let's look at the design first since the topic says that. The first of all, if you notice, there are six landing pads in the lens. There are six landing pads. So what this does for the patient is, if it's a toric lens, it's rock solid. If your workup is perfect, I have corrected till 11 diopters of astigmatism with bang on results in keratoconus, corneal scars, which means that this design works. There are six landing pads, which gives a far more good stability. And then if you notice, there are five extra holes. Now this is definitely a big, big plus point for the patient where there can be less amount of incidence of cataract. It's a non-animal protein. Of course, it can be very important in some religious groups or some countries. It's truly completely customized lens. It can go through a 2.8 millimeter incision. The best part is the angulation of the lens. The edge plate is flat and the central part is raised. So even if you have a very high wall, the chances of pigment dispersion are very minimal and also occlusion of the angles. So this unique design makes it very, very possible for you to have more forgiving fakic lens. I have corrected up to minus 34 until 11 diopters of cylinder. There is the central hole, which is again a unique design, unlike the other lenses. It's a taper-centered hole, which makes sure there's less amount of diffraction, internal reflection. It does not give you add that much amount of glare, whichever a normal central hole can give. It can be variable sized. I have used till 8.5 millimeter optic size lenses, till 14.5 millimeter of total diopters. It's a very thin lens, unlike the ICL, which is 120 microns. This is 180 microns. So these are the two. I will not go into the materials. The only difference here would be probably the porcine material. Now this is a very interesting study done by Dr. Miguel. And uh, this shows that the surface smoothness of the lens will give you the optical quality. And he, in this study where he was finding less than 0.1 nanometers, he proved that the IPCL is far more smoother than the ICL. Now sizes and extremes of power, we all know the variability of size is amazing. 0.25 point change for each size. Unlike other lenses which come in half, uh, half a millimeter, you can actually size very perfectly your fitting, unlike a normal ICL or a RIL where you have half diopters. Another beautiful part about the design is you do not need to rotate the lens. You can just put it at 0, 180 and it will give you the perfect lock. There's no need for a chart. There's no need for a reference point. All you need to do is mark 0, 180 and the lens will land in its place. Now this is a patient four, four years post-operatively, bang at the place where I left it, 0, 180. Now this is the diagram which I want to show. A normal lens will have a 360 uh, micron straight cut hole in the center. This gives edge glare. A lot of our patients will come to us saying that they see when in, at, at night they see a semicircular spot. That's the glare due to this particular circle. But the upper design is a design seen in an IPCL. There's a tapered hole which reduces the incidence. Another advantage is this compressible spring, spring like uh, edges or the haptics which do not encroach on the zonules so your stability is higher the chances of touching the the peripheral part of the crystalline lens is far more improved size and power availability we all know i'll just i'm going to wait fast now this is a huge plus point you have 13 sizes available in the ipcl whereas with a lot of other uh, stuff you can have four or six or seven sizes available you can actually customize down to the last part whatever you want because of these large sizes 
Now coming to the optic size, as I said, I've, I've used till 8.5. You can see how huge this lens is. This, pupil, this patient's pupil resting size, scrotomic size was 7.2 and he had a power of minus 17. So I had to do this, so we got a customized lens at 8.5, the patient is doing well. Now this is a cylindrical patient with minus 3.5 with 11 diopters of astigmatism with corneal, repaired corneal scar. Now this patient did extremely well, again due to the stability of the lens. We also have used these press biopic fake uh, uh, IPCLs in patients where I've already operated them and now they want some kind of a press biopic correction. You can use this uh, IPCL in these cases. So I've done nearly more than this is uh, 3,400 cases till now. This is a little old slide. And uh, they all behave beautifully. Just have around seven to nine patients of explantation. Cataract incidents, I feel, feel it's all because of a bad sizing or a bad surgeon. Bad optometrist or a bad surgeon, that's what causes a cataract in a fakie lens. Because if you are, while doing the surgery, you're touching the anterior capsule, you're bothering the anterior capsule, that's the time you will get a cataract. Or if your optometrist has not done a good job of doing a good size measurement and you have a little flatter vault or a lower vault or a shallower vault, you'll land with cataract. Otherwise, I have a series of 13 years of uh, IPCL with me, no cataract at all. I'm just noticing a little bit of decrease in vault with time, but there are no cataracts. So again, unique situations, I'll try and show you some videos. Now this is a study which I did, which was 300 patients. Majority of the patients were requiring a 12.5 millimeter implant. I'll go fast. Only 7% patients were a little bit on a shallower side of the wall. And I would say that anything less than 400 would be shallow. But with, I have patients where I have 250 volt also, but since there are five holes in the lens, the incidence of cataract I've still yet to see in these patients. Most of these patients, instead of being of superbly high myopic, are doing great. They're all 6, 9 and above. Now, these are some of the patients, minus 27. This is minus 29. This is minus 34. Now, this is the range of corrections you can do for these patients. You can get these lenses customized. Now, this is a patient. I'm just showing some quick videos. A patient operated in Ludhiana with Symphony. She came to me. She was a hyperope. And this is a uh, video, I think, eight years ago, came to me, hyperopia, I wanted to explant the lens. She refused for a lens explantation, chamber was shallow. So what do I do? I get a customized uh, uh, IPCL made, hyperopia plus five, and I put the IPCL since the interior chamber was not very good, and the patient did very well. Now this is, again, post, uh, post keratoconus, post intacts. This, you can see the intacts in this particular image. You can see the intacts here. So for patients of keratoconus where you've done intacts and there's still a residual astigmatism, you can still correct this. These patients do phenomenally well. The only difference is in keratoconus patients, you need not be very, very happy about a high anterior chamber depth because this is a false anterior chamber depth. This is not the true anterior chamber depth. So you should be looking at a good white to white and never ignore the angle. The angle will go down in my study from 15 to 18 degrees post IPCL implant. So if you're looking at an angle of 27, 28, refrain. Do not put a fake lens. But anything more than 35 in my study, I go ahead and do that. Now this is a patient with corneal scar, heel corneal scar. This patient was doing very well. Eight, 11 diopters of astigmatism. This is the same patient. We'll just see this video. 11 diopters of astigmatism. Patient is otherwise fine. No cataract. So I, this is a young boy. He had a beer bottle injury. He had a fight. He got into a fight and the, the, somebody just threw a beer bottle at him. So this is what we do. We put in a toric customized fake IPCL of 11 diopters. The patient was doing fantastic. This is another patient of a traumatic, uh, I just jump this. Yeah, This is an interesting case where the, we have this patient who's coming back to me after 18 years of surgery, complete total posterior sanike, minus 17 diopters of refraction, small non-dilating pupil. What can I do for this patient? So I go ahead break the sinicae, there's a complete sinicae with the anterior capsule. I go ahead, break the sinicae, customize fake IOL, implant it there, enough space for me to work around, and the patient is doing fantastic. Two more videos, and I think that's... Now, this is another case operated many years ago, 4.5 millimeter, 4.5 millimeter fake lens. Okay. So, thank you. We thank you, Dr. Here. Kamal, for thank that you. powerful talk, <laughs> as always, and uh, showing all those extreme cases and the utility of IPCL in these.